G'day guys. Today we're going to be reviewing a new build and we're going to be reviewing a new GPS chip. Now the build is the Chimera or Chimera however you say it 7 inch drone. This is the HD Pro from around about a year ago. Straight off the bat I can tell you that this is the worst build I have ever had to build. As a designer myself, when you build something and you do the design on it, the most important thing is to actually make sure everything that is going to go onto it fits. In this particular case, when this was built and designed, it would have been over a year ago. At that stage, we only had DJI Air Unit, and we had the Cadex air unit. Now, I ordered it for the DJI air unit, and the reason I never chose the current version of this frame is because it is designed, apparently, for the O3 air unit, which I don't have. Now, why am I a little bit disappointed in this build? And the reason is that the cable from the camera to the air unit is very short in this particular build, and as such, they have designed this red piece for the air unit to actually fit on the back over here. And the cable from the camera to the air unit is too short. How did I make it fit? I had to drill holes here and here, and that meant the uprights that support this top plate are now missing. So I have put the air unit forward. The other problem I've had with it is because it's forward, it interferes with the stack, which is a 30 by 30. If this stack had been a mini, I wouldn't have had as much grief, but I had hours and hours and hours of taking it apart, putting it back together, trying to work out what heights I need to make everything fit. And it was an absolute mission from hell. Now I have ordered a long cable, which I hope will change this problem for me. But again, I go back to, if I was designing this, I would have made sure that the air unit was in the front, which is the heavier part of the aircraft directly over its axis point. And I would have put the stack at the back because we can always run wires to a stack, but we can't easily change the wires on a camera to make them longer. So that for me was a, in a shockingly poor build. We're going to go out and test fly this and see how it actually flies. The second thing we're going to be testing today is the BZGNSS GPS chip. This is a series 10 and apparently can pick up more satellites than the standard sort of series 8. As you can see the difference in size is quite a lot. I have had GPS issues trying to get them to hook up because with the 4.4 beta flight rescue return to home and land you need a minimum of eight satellites. These little ones I find take forever to get a fix. We'll see how this one goes and let's see what the answer to this problem is. So let's get out there and go and fly this drone. G'day guys, again, down here at the old golf course, gonna fly the Chimera, Chimera, whichever you say. Let's see how it goes and see how fast it hooks up with this new GPS. Stand by. Okay guys, we've put the drone down there on the mat, and the reason I'm a little bit far back is I want to see how close it can land to that mat when it comes back under GPS rescue. So let's see how that goes. At the moment, I'm just gonna go and power it up. Okay, we are back at the car and we're going to now power up the goggles and everything else and see how it all goes. So at this stage, it's only been a few minutes and I'm interested to see how many GPS satellites we've already got. Unfortunately, I cannot record the OSD on the goggles because I have not routed them and don't actually want to do that. Currently, we're running 23 satellites and we're pretty much good to go. So we're going to arm up and away we're going to go. And here we go flying off to the end of the golf course area. Now we're up to still 23 satellites. Earlier on, on this GPS trip, I had 32. So I'm sure we'll get a few more as the time goes on. 
We only need eight for the GPS rescue to work. And let's fly past the camera. And back past our landing pad, Oops. which is over there. Let's go back up to the end. And I'm going to activate GPS rescue now. Drone is now ascending. Going up to this height that it's supposed to go to, working out where it needs to come back. It tends to be flittering around a little bit, but I guess that's because there's a fair amount of wind blowing around here at the moment. It's not quite sure what to do. I've got it set at 8 meters per second as far as ground speed is concerned, yet it's still buffering quite badly. I had it at 10 and it was a little bit less than it is now as far as that is concerned and we now got 28 satellites the drone is currently turning around and heading down for the landing and there you go she's just landed not what i had in mind but it's all good seems to be dropping that last meter for some reason arming and going to take off Give you a look around this area we're down to 3.8 volts we've used 443 milliamps so we're still pretty good it's a using a 4s battery on this particular drone at the moment even though it is a, a 7 inch i've got a 6s here if we take our height up to the maximum height we're allowed which is 120 meters give you an idea of the view in the area all right, we're currently at 110 meters and as you can see in the distance is the sea over there is one of the lakes the sea runs all the way down there and rotating around there is the city of brisbane that's the golf course that used to be a golf course that we're on at the moment And there's a sea again coming in on that side. And that's where we are positioned down over there. So we're just going to dive ourselves down back to that point. And keep flying. Now when you use GPS rescue for the first time, it's important that you test it to see two things. You want to make sure the arrow is pointing towards where it needs to land. And for example, when I fly past the landing site, you'll notice the arrow, well, you won't notice, the arrow actually turns and points towards the landing site. Unfortunately, as I said, I cannot record this OSD, which would be helpful because then you'd see it. Currently, we've got 32 satellites. And now I'm flying away from it. So once again, the arrow points backwards. The next thing to do is to put it into angle mode. So flick it into angle mode and see if it remains stable and flies flat and level, which it does which means that you know that it's going to have a reasonable shot at getting itself back home. Okay guys, in summary, Camaro, 7 inch, is it a good drone? The answer is it flies really well, it's very very smooth, I am a person who does not do freestyle, so charging it around in and out of bandos and stuff like that I'm not going to do, and I think using a 7 inch for that is crazy, 5 inches work fine. But as for me, it is a means of transporting a camera. I was going to say GoPro, but I am a bit fed up with GoPro because during today's filming, the GoPro decided to switch itself off saying camera was too hot, which to me is ridiculous. If these guys cannot make a camera that can run for the length of the battery without switching itself off all the time, that is hopeless. I will never buy another GoPro camera again this is absolutely the last one we will look for an alternative product that doesn't have these 
deficiencies. I wouldn't even call them problems. I'd call it a deficiency in design. We've got a design issue here with the cable and the length as I've spoke about earlier. And the GoPro is just another thing that just gives me a lot of grief. This fell off during one of the landings, the hard landing. It seemed to switch off about three to four meters in the air before it landed on the return to landing GPS rescue. And when it landed, it landed pretty hard. This jumped off and I had to pick it up and restick it on. It's been stuck on with double-sided tape, but clearly that's not enough. So I'm going to use a different system, either uh, an epoxy resin underneath it to stick it down so it does not move or a zipper across the top of it. Just for information, flying out here today, this golf course was sold to a retirement group who want to build it into retirement homes. Everybody's against it. We've got a lot of wildlife around here, including koalas and good old kangaroos, and we'd like them to stay where they are. We certainly don't want more housing in the area. As you could see from some of the aerial photography, there's enough houses here already, and people should go and move somewhere else, frankly. Anyway, this is something that uh, is ongoing, and that's why we have this abandoned golf course at this point in time great for me because i can use it to do testing and flying but i guess in the long run we'll lose it like we lose everything and it'll just be a whole cluster of another five or six thousand houses and we'll have all the hoons and the noise and everything going with it from me thank you very much for watching hit the like and subscribe help an old bloke out have a great afternoon Beautiful blue skies here today, 32 degrees C. Enjoy. Bye for now.